In this video, you'll learn how to use the Ping ultrasonic distance sensor with an Arduino. Let's start by looking at the sensor. You will see that it has three pins labeled ground, 5 volts, and SIG for signal. To connect to your Arduino, you will need male to female jumper wires. Plug the sensor pins into the female ends of the jumper wires. You can then connect the male ends directly to your Arduino if you're only testing the sensor, or to your breadboard if you have additional circuit parts. To connect directly to the Arduino, the ground pin goes to ground, the 5 volt pin goes to 5 volts, and the signal pin needs to go to one of the Arduino's I.O. pins. We're going to use pin 7. Let's switch over to the computer, take a look at the sensor's data sheet, and talk a bit about how it works. The sensor works by emitting bursts of ultrasonic sound and measuring how long they take to reflect back to the sensor. This is the same principle used by animals like bats for echolocation. If we scroll down on the data sheet, we can see the electrical signal that the sensor uses. You send a trigger pulse to the sensor. This makes it emit the burst of ultrasonic sound, and the sensor then emits a return pulse that is sent back to the Arduino. The length of this pulse is proportional to how long it takes the sound to reflect back to the sensor. Using the speed of sound in air, you can then calculate how far away the object is. Since it's using reflected sound, the sensor's readings are not perfect. They can depend on the shape and exact location of the object you are measuring because this will affect how sound is reflected back to the sensor. You can read more about this in the datasheet. Basic use of the sensor is easy because the Arduino IDE comes with an example program. Go to File, Examples, Sensors, Ping to open the program. Let's take a quick walk through the example code. First, it declares a constant variable for the pin that it's going to use for the sensor signal. In the setup function, it initializes serial communication so it can print the sensor readings out to the serial monitor. Then, in the loop function, it declares variables for the duration of the sensor pulse and the distance in inches and centimeters. Next, it generates the trigger pulse by using the pin mode to set the ping pin as an output, and then using the digital write command to generate a short high pulse. Then, note that the sensor uses a single I.O. pin for both the trigger and return pulses, so we need to use the pin mode command to set the pin as an input. Then, it uses the pulse in command to measure the duration of the return pulse. Now, the pulse in function returns the length of the pulse in microseconds, but we need to convert that to a distance. So there are two different functions that convert microseconds to inches and microseconds to centimeters. And again, this is done using the speed of sound and air and the equation velocity equals distance over time, accounting for the fact that the sound needs to go out and come back, so there is a factor of two. You can read the comments in these functions for the complete explanation if you don't understand that calculation. Then, finally, we use the serial print command to print the distance readings in both inches and centimeters out to the serial monitor. If you upload the program, open the serial monitor, and move your hand back and forth in front of the sensor, you should see the distance readings change. Here's a programming challenge for you. Add an LED to your circuit and make it light up only when your hand is closer than 10 centimeters to the sensor. To explain how to do that, we will switch over to Tinkercad so we can easily see the code and circuit at the same time. First, I have added two new variables to the code, one for the LED pin and one for the threshold distance that I want to compare my sensor reading to. I declare that LED pin as an output in my setup function, and then in my loop function, I've added an if statement. If the centimeter reading is less than my threshold variable, then I will turn the LED pin on, else if the sensor reading is greater than that, the LED pin will remain off. So when you run the simulation in Tinkercad, you can click on the ping sensor and drag this imaginary ball back and forth in front of the sensor and see the resulting reading here. So we see that the LED will remain off until I get the ball closer than 10 centimeters to the sensor. If I move the ball farther away again, the LED turns off. For an added challenge, you can try adding multiple LEDs like you see here. 
In our next video, we will cover the HCSRO4 ultrasonic distance sensor, which is nearly identical to the ping in operation, but it uses two separate pins for the trigger and return pulses.